I'm putting together this amazing touchscreen experience for all of you guys. And so during this process, I realized that my virtual consultation on skin rejuvenation is pretty outdated. So I really need to update it. This virtual consultation is to help you understand what I can do for you in terms of a skin rejuvenation standpoint. Uh, as a background, I always tell my patients to avoid uh, excessive sun, use sunblock, use hats, stay out of the, the sun during the noon time. And really a lot of the aging in terms of volume loss, et cetera, is, is due to sun exposure, especially if you are uh, very fair skinned. The lasers can be classified into two broad categories, non-ablative and ablative. So I'm going to talk about specifically what I do. Now this does not mean that what someone else does is wrong or better or worse. It's just what I do and found to have worked extremely well in my hands. So the non-ablative is the one, it's like a photofacial or an IPL type of thing, what people are very familiar with. And then there is the ablative side. Ablative means you're going to have some recovery time. So let's talk about each of those categories and discuss what each thing does. The non-ablative one I use is called a Gemini. It, it composes two things, a KTP a, a 532 nanometers and 1064 NDAG. Essentially what this uh, photofacial does is really help with pores, texture, tone, some broken blood vessels, a little bit of brown discoloration, but it's not perfect to knock all that out. And usually really no downtime. So one of those things where you can come in, uh, go back to work and be pretty good. The only time where there can be a little swelling is if you have a lot of rosacea and we got to knock out all those blood vessels, um, then that is something that you may have a little bit of mild swelling for a day or two, but usually it's presentable and going back out there, but it's not, you don't get um, your skin removed. So non-ablative means there's no ablation or removal of the skin. It's something that's a really an office-based procedure. How often should you do this? Every four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, th three months. It's Think of it like a facial. Um, it, the reason why I, I believe this, this laser is better than an IPL or, or broad beam light is simply because that a broad beam light is not focused on the wavelength for collagen remodeling where this one really targets that, specifically really for even broken blood vessels. When I was doing my fellowship, I trained with something called a V-beam, um, which is a pulse dye laser at 589 nanometers. The problem with that laser is that it, it caused some blotchiness. So what this one does is actually just evaporates the vessel. Very powerful in terms of cleaning up some of those sun vessels that, that, that causes blotchy appearance to your skin, but it, it, it evaporates the tissues rather than tries to explode the vessel, which can cause some, um, some discoloration and some uh, bruising that I, that I don't find very very nice in terms of the recovery period. So the non-ablative laser is a relatively inexpensive, easy thing to do. My staff does it. They're very well trained to do it. It's something that my staff always um, tells me, Dr. Lamb, make sure you tell the patients it's something you got to schedule so that they come in. They, there is a, a time that takes them to do that. Um, and so just something just to keep in mind that that's one category, non-ablative. The ablative is a second category. And within the ablative category, there's actually two types of ablative fractional and non-fractional. So I want to talk about uh, the two types. The, the non-fractional or the, fra excuse me, the fractional laser. Fractionation essentially means that there, the laser is computer driven. There's little tiny holes that it makes and there's a, a gap between the holes. So these holes are made with a carbon dioxide or CO2 laser. It goes deeper. People say, is it a Fraxel? And the word Fraxel is very confusing because Fraxel is a brand. It's like saying Kleenex. And Fraxel, there's two types of repair and restore. One is an erbium and one is a CO2. The laser I use is a Cortex. It actually incorporates both CO2 and, uh, and erbium. Um, CO2 goes pretty deep. And the reason why CO2 is safe, unlike the full non-fractionated non CO2, is that the fractionated CO2 doesn't cause hypopigmentation or loss of skin color. If you see some of those old, um, in the 90s and early 2000s, people did a very aggressive full, full non-fractionated CO2. In other words, just fully ablative CO2. People have these white demarcation lines. They, they lose pigment. And fractionated CO2 absolutely does not do that. It preserves your pigment because it keeps little skin, tiny micro skin bridges between those areas. Um, fractional CO2 and, and erbium to me are used very well for someone that just comes in with some mild wrinkles under the eyes. Someone that says, hey, you know what? I just have a little bit of quality of skin that doesn't look so uh, good, a little bit of photo aging. Um, I, I don't want to spend that much. I just want to do something very easy for myself. 
um, the, the, the Cortex does a, a really good job for that. Now there's still some downtime, and I'm going to talk about downtime as a separate category in a minute, um, combining both lasers in, in one moment. But it is about a week of downtime, by the way, and we'll go through the mechanics of that more in detail in just a minute. But the, the, when I use a fractional CO2 and fractional erbium for my patients, and number one, uh, fine lines around the eyes, someone with mild to moderate uh, sun damage with some fine, thinner skin, some textural changes that are not that great that they want improved. Uh, but they can't handle the downtime, and also for some patients with acne scars. Now, acne scars, I just want to briefly put this in a, as an aside. For me, acne scars is the principal mechanism to treat acne scars, and that's a whole separate video in a separate section of the website as well as uh, in all my um, uh, literature, is, is really meant to raise uh, atrophic holes up to normal levels. So lasers lower normal skin or to, to abnormal skin, and so that's not very effective. So I don't use a lot of lasers as a first pass for acne scars. I think it just really doesn't do very much. What I use lasers and acne scars is to elevate the acne scars up to, sorry, excuse me, let me clarify. I use like microsilicone drops and various other fillers to bring the, the abnormal tissue up to normal tissues as close as I can. And when there's that final etch mark that's left, then I laser it. And currently right now, my favorite laser to use is this Cortex or fractional uh, CO2 laser. And then um, I rubbed Sculptra, which is a, a collagen uh, uh, rem remodeling um, agent into the holes to provide further collagen remodeling. So for me, Cortex is also good for acne scars, very just for the, as a finishing touch, and I only do that in maybe about 10% of my acne uh, scar patients. So in summary, Cortex uh, is about a week of downtime, which again, I'm gonna go through more in detail in a moment. Um, it, it is good for fi uh, mo mild to moderate uh, sun damage, for just isolated wrinkles around the eyes. It's good for uh, finishing off acne scars. Uh, the second laser I have is a Cyton, S-C-I-T-O-N. It is a non-fractionated, so there's no little holes, erbium laser. And erbium is a very confusing term because erbium says, oh, that's weaker than CO2. But this erbium is from one of the best manufacturers out there, Cyton, that creates an incredibly good control. So my erbium in the Cyton is 10 times better than the erbium that I have as part of my cortex fractionation. One, it's because it's not fractionated. And second of all, because of the computer generation, it actually just finesses, it almost sands down those edges of problems that are, that are out there. And the, um, the Cyton laser, uh, I, I have all different settings on and, and control it so that I can get the levels that I, that I want. What the Cyton is really intended for, for me, the number one indication is bad wrinkles around the mouth. People that have those deep etch marks, the cortex just does not do enough. Now I want to warn you, Cyton does not eliminate it. Nothing eliminates all wrinkles around the mouth or anywhere. But some of those people that have those deep corrugations, deep, deep lines that go down, those areas, the Cyton does better. So when you got moderate to significant sun damage and you want a better result, it costs a little bit more for the Cyton, uh, then I can do that. And the downtime is pretty comparable. Downtime is pretty comparable, so I want to finish up a little bit about the downtime. The downtime is pretty comparable between the two. The uh, Cyton actually causes probably a little less swelling for a few days. The reason is the CO2 goes deeper, but remember because it's, it, it's separated like this, it, it's, it's, it's not, um, it's, it, it, it can go deeper. With the erbium, it's, it's sort of skinning down the, the very outer layers and tightening the very outer layers so it doesn't go as deep. And, and so the, the cyton sometimes causes a little less swelling for a few days, but sort of the redness and discoloration and sort of the peeling that you're gonna go through for the first few days uh, are, are very similar between the two. And I would say th for three to four days, you can have a little bit of weirdness or a lot of weirdness that is really gonna make you unpresentable. And just to be safe, I always say seven days, but people hear the word seven days and they're cued into the idea that it's seven days that everything magically becomes normal by day eight, and that's false. So it's a parameter of helping you understand how much time you should maybe consider taking off from work but at seven, eight days, you're not perfect. What, in term, to, to have you understand this recovery period a little bit better, I wanna talk a little bit about how to 
what we do during the recovery phase so you understand this better. What, we, what, I, what you do is for the first few days when you're peely and, and you're a little bit swollen, it doesn't look so good, you, I, I, I wanted you, you to put on some makeup, uh, sorry, some, uh, some thicker products like Aquaphor, Vaseline, things like that to keep every, all the emollients to keep it moist. But after the first three, four days or so, as that swelling goes down or as the peeling starts to slow down, you can use Oxygenetics. Uh, Oxygenetics spelled with an X at the end. It's a skincare product that's all natural, silicone based, that which is amazing, has really changed the way that I can curtail the recovery period. Because with Oxygenetics, people can easily cover a large part of the, once the, the major peeling goes down, they can easily cover a lot of the discoloration um, a few days afterwards. Now, I'm not saying 100%, and, uh, but a lot of it, and it can be placed over raw skin, which is really quite remarkable, and really is hypoallergenic. It helps actually facilitate skin healing, and it's color matched to your skin. My staff are really well trained at, at color matching you because they've been using it for many, many years. Um, and oxygenetics can be used um, even in the second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth week, my naturopath, I actually have a naturopath that works with me, um, has actually tested this product. It's, it's very, very safe on your skin. And a lot of people love it just as a daily uh, makeup product because it's so hypoallergenic and so safe for the skin. But you can have some discoloration even past that first week. I've seen one, two, three, even four weeks, even five weeks of some mild discoloration. So you need to know uh, that going into it. So if, you, if you're if you a gentleman doing this, keep in mind that you may have some issues with having to wear some makeup camouflage in that first, second, or third week just to make sure everything is covered. For gentlemen, in terms of shaving, I'm not going to allow you to shave for two weeks afterwards and then you can use an electric razor uh, for the next two weeks and then at four weeks you can start uh, shaving normally. Um, if It is harder for gentlemen and the reason is most men are not accustomed to wearing makeup products or camouflage products uh, but at the same side which is interesting is men heal twice as fast as women and the reason for this is that the oil glands in the skin facilitate a much more rapid healing uh, for men than women and so that's the makeup uh, process, uh, sorry, so that's the, uh, the aftercare and sort of the recovery process following uh, a procedure of, of laser resurfacing. Um, some of the things uh, I want to talk about uh, also on, on, the, on the front end are the, the people that are not a candidate for this. People that um, are having um, a uh, facelift or something else, I, I may go deeper on the lift, I may not be doing a lot of laser, I can confine lasers to small areas, I don't, I'm not as aggressive with lasers, but I can easily combine lasers with surgical procedures, or I can do it as an office-based procedure. So either way works very, very well, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But the, the things that people I don't want to treat are people that have, for example, some kind of major scarring on their face in terms of linear scars or things like that that I'm worried about um, uh, interfering with, that they just have bad skin tone. People that are heavy smokers, people that have had Accutane within 6 to 12 months, I, I would say 12 months to be conservative because Accutane knocks out the oil gland so you, don't, you can't recover as well. So those are the patients that I probably don't want to work on. But as I was alluding to earlier, this can be easily done as part of a surgical procedure. It can be also done as a standalone procedure. As a standalone procedure, I want to talk a few, mechanic, a few mechanical elements about what you need to know coming into my office. So, because I do a lot, I, I, uh, I, I want to numb you and make you make this experience as comfortable as possible. Uh, I would really like you to have someone drive you home. Now, uh, for people that have had like rhinoplasties, things like that, I had actually have to have someone drive you home as a companion. But for lasers. Things like that. If you're nearby, you could you could Uber home or taxi home. It's fine. I just rather you not drive home. The reason is I like to give you a little oral sedation. It makes things a lot easier. I can do this under IV sedation. There's a small extra charge for that. I have a full Joint Commission accredited surgical facility it allows me to do a little bit deeper sedation if you want. Most people just don't need it, and I make it a relatively pleasant experience for you through that period of time. The way that I do this is a lot of pay, a lot of doctors that do lasers. They they don't go deep enough because they're afraid of of causing issues with the skin or causing discomfort, I want to go deep enough that you're going to actually have an impactful result. So I do the lasers myself, the blade of lasers. So in order to do that, I've got to make you comfortable. The way I do it is I, I do numbing cream for about 30 to minutes to an hour. I prefer about an hour, um, maybe sometimes up to 90 minutes. So allocate about 60 minutes for that. 
And then at, um, after the numbing cream, I do all dental blocks and all regional facial blocks. The area out here is very hard to numb, so I've got areas what's called tumescent anesthesia, where I just ble bleed a very dilute anesthetic in this area, and that creates a very uniform anesthetic. I use a longer lasting anesthetic because you get this sort of sunburn feeling right after for about three or four hours. So if I can sort of overcome some of those elements, the discomfort afterwards will be mitigated or minimized significantly. Um, and then I just do the procedure. And of course, if you're having some mild discomfort here or there, I'll, I will titrate that as possible. But I'm really very focused on, on comfort. Now, during the injection process of the blocks, there's going to be some mild discomfort. But I do a lot of vibration, a lot of pinching, which is a nerve distraction technique, slow, diluted uh, anesthetics. I do my, my dental blocks are, are almost completely painless. Um, so I'm very, very good at getting you to a very comfortable state for the procedure. The procedure itself, after the hour of numbing, will take between 30 minutes to an hour and a half, usually about an hour. Another very common question I get from people um, is, you know, how much improvement can I get in the neck with laser or across my body? Lasers, once you go outside the face, are not that effective when you're dealing with uh, uh, sort of ablative lasers because you really can't ablate deeply. The reason for this is that these other areas of your skin simply do not have the, the oil glands to create uh, regeneration, so you have to do a much lower dose, you don't get scarring. So in the neck, I do laser the neck, I do laser hands, but they, they typically, they just don't get that level of remodeling. So in the neck for skin rejuvenation, typically what, I, what I'm doing is sculpture injections, I can do some light fractional lasers, and then I do some Botox for some banding. Of course, the best thing is to suspend the neck if someone's got a sagging neck or a hanging neck with a, a neck or facelift. But just in terms of some improvements in the neck, Sculptra uh, is one thing that I, I have light. It doesn't get rid of all wrinkles, but it just sort of modulates the collagen remodeling in that area and can act as a very nice complement to some of the laser resurfacing that I, I do for the face. Um, so these are just general principles of laser resurfacing and I can't cover everything in this video. These are just meant to give to maybe raise some questions for you when you come in for consultation, address some of the, the, the basic principles of, of the procedure itself, the nature of the procedure, the, the pros and cons of limitations, indications, the nature of the recovery.